You're listening to the Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. Yeah, it's a mouthful. For more great shows like the one you're about to enjoy, visit electronicmediacollective.com. And now, our feature presentation. This is Randy. In the future, Star Wars Episode Nine will be directed by David Lynch. This is Jesse. In the future, due to the popularity of BB-8, in Episode 8 of Star Wars, they will roll out a droid that is basically two beach balls stuck together with Jar Jar Binks' head in the middle, so the balls will revolve around his head and crush him in order to move. This is Melanie, and in the future, another trilogy will be made for Star Wars so that the 12 days of Christmas can coincide with the 12 days of Star Wars movies that they will play on TV (laughs) during the Christmas season. I feel like that will actually happen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, especially with these one-offs they're going to do. It'll be it'll be 12 plus. Yep. It'll be a baker's dozen. <laughs> There's, when Randy was watching the old ones, I was telling him uh, the second one mm-hmm. was always playing. Emp- Christmas. Empire? Or- yeah. yeah. Oh, that makes sense because they're on Hoth. Always, every Christmas. That was like a Christmas movie to me cause, because I watched it every Christmas at my grandma's house. I thought that was weird that <laughs> Star Wars was like a Christmas movie to you. I know, but it was. Well, you know, it's like it's got all sorts of family drama in it, so it, <laughs> it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is snowy, a mm-hmm. lot of it. I am your father. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it would be that, and then it'd be a, um, what is that one movie where he shoots his, they're like, you're going to shoot your eye out. Christmas story. Oh, yeah, Christmas th- story, those yeah. two, those two movies. <laughs> that's weird. I would not have, I would not have put those two together. Yeah, I know, but that that was my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Grolix Go- Podcast. I've been- Golix! Welcome to the Golix Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Take your time. Look around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I think this is episode twenty three. This is definitely our December episode, mm-hmm. even though we're all a little sleepy because we're recording not 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 after Thanksgiving, but after our uh, belated ice storm delayed Thanksgivings. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um. So we all we're all turkeyed up. Yep. Gravy, gravy day. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we just got off the gravy train. Yep. Yep. Uh, but you know, no reason to tune out because we're full of energy. Yeah, yeah we are. Woo. <laughs> um, we're not not at all sick or stuffed up or nasally. <laughs> we're, we're not. We're not on Nyquil to make this happen. The sacrifices for our listeners. Sacrifices made. Sac- yeah, sacrifices. <laughs> <laughs> it's only gonna get better from here. Yeah, because. We have the words to tell you. Yes. And today the words will include things about uh, Daredevil Yellow, our pull list pick that was chosen last Mm -hmm. month. And um, not so much another Daredevil thing that we were supposed to read. Uh, And and, uh, although, you know, I'm sure, Jesse, you read a little bit of it. We were going to read Man Without Fear and Melanie. Oh, I read the whole thing. Yeah, read Jesse thing. read the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Melanie and I ditched ditched him. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I do feel bad <laughs> because yeah, I do feel bad. Um, and then we're also gonna we got lots of other stuff to talk about though too. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, entertainment. I've been consuming some entertainment. You oh yeah, have been consuming. Yeah, I've been just eating it up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we were just talking about Star Wars a little bit when I probably. It's as close to a cold open as the show will get. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but yeah, obviously, there's just insane Star Wars hype online. Um, so, and it was another thing that I had hoped to like watch all of the original trilogy before we recorded. Um, uh, but, but I watched two of them, two of the original. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. I'm not a big, I've just never been a, I've enjoyed them when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Right. So, it's been like the last time I watched Star Wars four um, was when they re-released it in the theaters in the nineties. Mm-hmm. 
And then the the other ones, Empire Strikes Back, I hadn't watched since before that. Uh, so it'd been a long time. And I borrowed the saga, the complete saga. Uh Um, so I had all, all six movies and I was like, you know what? You know, there's so much hype and the new movies are coming up. So I was like, maybe I'll give them a watch and see if I, you know, Mm -hmm. how it strikes me, whether I should be excited for the new one or not. Right. Um, because there is, there is something intoxicating about internet hype. To a oh, point, yeah. to a point, and then it can become obnoxious. But you know, sure, I, I'm not the type to be fake excited. So I thought I'd give it a try and see if I could be real excited with everybody. Mm-hmm. I was, uh, I was a, you know, a Star Wars kid, um, and I had the Kenner toys and stuff, and I, I had uh, like a picture book for the Return of the Jedi, which I just loved. Like I read the cover right off of that book. But um, I don't know. As an adult, I'm not. I'm not as huge a fan as I was as I was a kid, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. You know, I like, I really liked it as a kid, but it's not like, it's not like um, a lot of my friends are just diehard and they've read all the books and they've consumed all the, you know, the tertiary media, the games and everything. And I've, I've done some of them. Like I, I read um, Heir to the Empire, part of the Thrawn trilogy. And then, um, like Shadow of the Empire, I think was a game that came out that was supposed to bridge Empire and Jedi, mm-hmm. and so I read that, and so I've read a little bit of those extra things. But um, yeah, I I can't say that I'm like a a true diehard at all. But worlds I like of, them. Worlds of Star Wars stories that are no longer canon. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks, Obama. <laughs> I'm gonna blame that one on Obama too. Well, of course. The abomination. <laughs> um, I wonder how many listeners that either pulled in or drove away the title of that episode. The abomination. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I have this little thing. I, I debated whether I should start with the classic series and then see how I felt about watching the prequels mm-hmm. or if I should just try to ch- start at episode one and power through. And let me read you something here. I have something prepared. Okay. Oh, this is oh wow. <laughs> okay, so I put the movies in. I put first I started Star Wars episode 4, A New Hope. Mm-hmm. And it starts and you get the scrawl, the the text scrawl mm-hmm. and scroll, whatever yeah. it's called. <laughs> it's like a combination between a scroll and a crawl cuz it's right. different. All right, okay. It's a scrawl. <laughs> <laughs> um and the music you know, the music and the spaceship flying overhead and all that. And I was kind of excited. I was like, Oh yeah, this, yeah, I could, I could be feeling this. So I'm sure there's everybody that anybody who's listening to this knows this by heart, but the text that scrawls on at the beginning of episode four, I'm going to read it to you. And I have, I have a reason for this. So it starts off and the text is, it is a period of civil war. Rebel spaceships striking from a hidden base have won their first victory against the evil Galactic Empire. During the battle, rebel spies managed to steal secret plans of the Empire's ultimate weapon, the Death Star, an armored space station with enough power to destroy an entire planet. Pursued by Empire sinister agents, Princess Leia races home aboard her starship, custodian of the stolen plans that can save her people and restore freedom to the galaxy. I was like, all right, that's exciting. That's how you start a story. So then I was like, you know what? Yeah, maybe I'll go back to the beginning. I'll get the whole story. Oh, no. So I start, <laughs> so I start episode one. No. You get the music. Here's the text that starts scrolling oh, across the, pit, no. the screen. Turmoil has, en- has engulfed the Galactic Republic. Ooh, this is good, right? Mm-hmm. The taxation of trade routes to outlying star systems is in dispute. Wait, what? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hoping yeah. to res- hoping to resolve the matter with a blockade of deadly battleships, the Greedy Trade Federation has stopped all shipping to the small planet of Naboo. <laughs> While the Congress of the Republic endlessly debates this alarming chain of events, the Supreme Counselor has secretly dispatched two Jedi Knights, the Guardians of Peace and Justice, to the galaxy to settle the conflict. Yep. The taxation of trade 
is in dispute. <laughs> uh-huh. This is yeah. we go from this amazing like planet destor- destroying Death Star and struggle to the taxation of trade routes. Yeah. And that and I let it play a little past that. And we got who is it? Liam Neeson and uh uh oh what's his name? Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor. They show up and they're talking. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I, you know I what? Just... Uh uh-uh. uh going back to episode four. Yeah, yeah there's a there's a, a machete order, uh which is supposed to be pretty good order to watch them in, and that's uh Four, five, and then you go back to two and three, like as a flashback. Okay. And then you do Jedi. So oh, you do. Interesting. So you just skip uh, Phantom Menace because it's not necessary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I've seen bits of the prequels, if not all of them, mm-hmm. but I don't remember a lot of it. I remember there was a lot of kind of slow bits. Yeah. So I'm not sure all which ones I've seen, but but yeah, okay, that's interesting. But I had to point that out because going right from the beginning of episode four and I was like, okay, yeah, maybe, you know what? Maybe I'll try the other one. And then the other one started and <laughs> I can't imagine like, I think what I felt was probably only a f- tiny fraction of the diehard fans in what was it? 99, 2000, something when that, when that episode one came out. Oh yeah. I can't, the disappointment they must've felt when they like going into this movie, like so excited. You know, I don't know. Uh, remember watching it and thinking, and you know, like I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I was disappointed yet. You know, like okay. I, I, I was, I was in for it. I was in for the long haul, mm-hmm. but it became really. I mean, where it became really obvious was where we were going to deal with um, Jar Jar, obviously, uh-huh. and then, and then basically we're going to lock the Jedi's in a waiting room and then try to kill them. I mean, it's like, that's literally some of the plan is like, hey, you guys just wait here and then we'll close the blast doors and <laughs> try to kill you. I mean, like right off the bat, it's like, oh, OK, we're going to use really boring tactics. Yeah. As, I mean, yeah. And then we're going to run all over and we're going to hide. We're going to hide in, in plant on, on plants that we've already seen, like Tatooine. That's not to say, you know, I'm not passing judgment on them totally. It's just, yeah, it, like, I was like, oh, wait, this is maybe why this is why a lot of people are not fans of these prequels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're pretty widely panned. But I, I was just I was just having a conversation the other day about how um, there are things that are really good about them, though, too. Like, um, Ewan McGregor, I mean, man, he should have got an Oscar for his ability to basically piggyback somebody else's portrayal of a character. Oh, sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much nail it. You know, uh, Qui-Gon did a nice job for what he had. Um, you know, Darth Maul was pretty awesome. I mean, he, he had, I guess he didn't have a lot of time to screw anything up, but (laughs) (laughs) there was that. I might go, go back and watch. Maybe I'll do that. Like you said, like that, that suggested order. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that sounds like not a bad idea because I did watch, I did watch a new hope as it's called now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I enjoyed it. And then I watched, um, the second one's empire, right? Empire. Strikes yep, Back. Yep. And, and I love that one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Empire is brilliant. And I it's forgot a, how it's awesome my favorite. it is. It's, it's, it's darker. Like, I mean, it's heavier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but also it seems it has kind of like. Some very memorable moments, and I kind of think it's a better directed movie, like or at least the cinematography. I just like the look of it a lot more than the first one. Mm. But surely they had more money too. <laughs> you would think so. Yeah, you yeah. would think so. Except it. I mean, this is kind of to be expected when you look at these trilogies that are built in trilogies, like and then you kind of apply. Does it stand on its own? Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. a good sequel should still be able to stand on its own. And I mean, it kind of does as far as like, in a way, the first one, I mean, Darth Vader still like at the end of the first one gets away. And so that's unresolved. Right. Um, But you know, there was the plan. Mm -hmm. So I don't think, I don't think that criteria really hurts those movies so much because you kind of know at that point that you're getting into a big thing. Yeah. And it's not like, you know, they had half of a movie and, and we're like, well, it's so great, even though, you know, 
it's three books. We're going to split it into four movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Now. Like every yeah. other freaking. Re- was it Return of the Jedi is the third one or the last yeah. one then? So, yeah, that would have been Return of the Jedi Part 1. Yeah. And then Return of the <laughs> Jedi Part 2. Oh, oh no. I can't even imagine if they did that. It's kind of a bad trend. I know. I don't yeah. like that they. I mean, if they're going to do it, give the Part 1 and Part 2 its own, like, was it surtitle or subtitle or whatever? Mm-hmm. Instead yeah. of just being like part one, part two. Like we know we're, you're, we know you've run up to the last book in the Harry Potter, uh, Hunger Games, whatever series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just, just everybody knows if, if they're coming to it because they're a fan of the book, they know it's based on this book. Just give it yeah. a different title. And you know what? Harry Potter, sorry, real quick. I know it's not on that. They, they split uh, Deathly Hollows into two. When it was really not necessary, and if they were going to do that, they should have done that to um, the Half Blood Prince because they m- left out a lot of important stuff from mm-hmm. from the nice. book when they made the movie, mm-hmm. and then just I don't know. Never mind. It doesn't matter. Half Blood Prince is my least favorite of those movies, anyways, because I think they botched that whole reveal, like that whole scene where everything goes down. Mm-hmm. Spoilers, Dumbledore dies. Yeah. <laughs> and and they did not react the way that I imagined it. Like I imagined a frenzy. I imagined like this emotional uh, storm mm-hmm. that just erupts, you know, and and Harry Potter like calls out Snape and Snape just goes crazy and that didn't happen, you know, like I know that uh I know that Alan Rickman is capable of it and the director just did not ask it of him. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. And so that one bums me out. I can kind of see them splitting the Harry Potter books because they're so long. So I would almost forgive that one. But then you've got books like The Hobbit, which is shorter than any one part of The Lord of the Rings, Mm -hmm. getting three movies. And they released extended versions of those three Uh movies. And same thing with... uh, Mockingjay. They decided with the Hunger Games, let's just split that last book. That last book was shorter than The Hobbit. Yeah, really? Yeah, I don't. And it's all internal. I don't. I don't know if you guys have read that uh-huh. book, but like no. that last book is basically her being stuck in District Thirteen and going crazy. Really? And so oh. they took that book and split it in half. That doesn't make any sense. Mm-mm. Which is it's because they're just trying to make more money. That's worrisome because I thought. The second was it the second movie, mm-hmm. Catching Fire? Yeah, wasn't bad, but I thought it it felt like there was just a lot of filler or stuff that didn't need to happen. Mm-hmm. It felt like there was. I haven't read any of the books, so oh. I I can't come at it from that angle. But it felt like the stuff that happened in that movie in in book form might mm-hmm. be more satisfying. But it's way more satisfying in movie way form. More. Like compared to the first movie, it's less satisfying because them being in the. I mean, I kind of like the characters. Or at least I like Katniss. Um, yeah. Some of the other characters are a little, I don't know, thin, I guess. But um, maybe not thin, but not as interesting. But the Hunger Games is like the thrilling part that's exciting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the second one, you've got, hey, you're going to be our poster girl for the uh, the uh, revolution or the rebels and, and, and do this commercial. And I know that's kind of the point, but it's not as thrilling as. That's the third one. Oh, the third one. How many have we seen? We've seen three. The, there was the first oh, one. They all blend. The first one was the regular Hunger Games. The second one was like you've all won before Hunger Games, where oh, they, quarter, took, quarter they like, kidnapped yeah. her. Or okay, whatever. yeah, they are the all revolution blending. kidnapped. Her okay, well, see, that was one. okay because there was more Hunger Games. Right. No, it was the last one. The third. The one, last right. one. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah. I, yeah, and that's the one they split. They decided that that one needed to be longer. Oh, <laughs> see, I, <laughs> I was totally like, lost. of all of the books to go ahead and split in half, that one. Yeah. Well, all three, totally... all three, uh, basically a good portion of these books in, exist inside of Katniss's head because in the first book, it's her experiencing the Hunger Games for the first time and going through that process in her mind and what she has to do, all the manipulation, mm-hmm. all the like media stuff that she's got to do to be, um, to be a favored candidate, you know? And then same thing in the second one. Now she's got to play the part. And how does that affect her mentally? And then the third one, she's been lying for so long that that it's really messing up her psyche and she's seeing all of her friends die. So you're seeing all this PTSD happening in her head 
in the books, you can't convey that into a movie. And mm-hmm. I don't think it did, really. No. Mm-mm. I haven't Not seen it. Not very well. Well, is the last one's out then, right? Yeah, yeah, we went and saw it. And okay, we have not. It's all right it. as far as it goes. I mean, they they did a fairly faithful adaptation. It's just you can't convey that stuff. Most of the book was not. Most of the book was narration. Yeah. Okay. So we've seen the first three. We haven't seen the last one. Okay. Well, I mixed that up a little bit, and there's probably Hunger Games fans screaming at us. But yeah, this last movie is going to be a lot more action than the one that you just saw. Then, that's good. Well, that because makes, all the action was at the end of the book. That makes yeah. a lot of sense to me. Then that's why it felt a little like, mm, "Come on, let's yeah. get going." Because it was a split, a short book split into two, and that was the first part. Okay. And you don't yeah. like Julianne Moore? I don't like Julianne Moore. Uh-huh. Not really. No, I'm not a fan. <laughs> I think she's good, but you know, whatever. You can listen. Crying will only get you so far. I'm tired of seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get you an award, but it won't win you awards with me all the time. <laughs> Julianne Moore. <laughs> I need more. I need more from your portrayal. Yeah. <laughs> Clarice. Yeah, right. And that's <laughs> like Star Wars. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, we got way off track. Sorry. So, at this point, to be fair, yeah, I'm a little. I'm. I'm very interested in the new movie to see what it's like. Mm-hmm. The trailer looks good. Mm -hmm. Uh, people are definitely excited. Oh yeah. I haven't heard a lot of, um, jeers from level headed, normal star Wars. Not that normal star Wars fans are always level headed, but you know, normal people, Mm -hmm. there's been jeers from weird groups, but the internet is just that way anymore. Oh yeah. Like Fox news. (laughs) Yeah. You know, white supremacists and various people are not happy about it, but who cares? (laughs) It's because it's a much more multi, uh, multi-ethnic. Is that the word? Um, yeah. Multicultural, cast, mul- yeah. multicultural cast. Um, it's not. About, they had a Wookiee. They had robots. Right. Was, sh- sh- right. Well, they had a Greedo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's and a Bosch. At a Admiral Akbar. <laughs> and Lando. <laughs> yeah. All right. They maybe have a point. Yeah. Well, not not so much the. Uh, the the white supremacist, but the idea of putting you know uh, yeah. a wider range of uh, people represented is a good idea. Mm-hmm. But yeah. like that's really the only like, um, what's the word? You know, when the internet throws a hissy, mm-hmm. that's the only like um, blowback I guess I've heard is from people who are kind of racist. So yeah, so that seems like good. That's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all oh, right, okay. Now I do want to see this movie even more. Yep. So that was that was our Star Wars talk. <laughs> uh, what else? I don't have a lot to say about it, but um, you know, this could have something to do with not reading as uh, some of the Daredevil I was supposed to read. I've been playing. <laughs> I've been playing a lot of Fallout Four. Oh yeah. yeah, that could do it. It's the new thing. Well, yeah, and the internet <laughs> says it's the thing too. So and, you're not alone. You're in good company. And it is the thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm almost done. I'm almost done with three, and then it'll be my thing too. It's it's Fallout Minecraft. It's Fallout Craft. Mm-hmm. Really? Well, it's they've definitely okay. So it plays very much like the other, like Fallout Three. I can't say for New Vegas. I didn't play New Vegas. Um, so it's got the feel down. I mean, it's it's Fallout all the way. Uh, they definitely made some changes. Like Vats doesn't totally freeze time. It slows it down. Um. But that actually does work well in, I mean, it keeps the pressure up, which is the nice thing about VATS in the older one is you hit the button and time stops and you can pick what to mm-hmm. shoot, you know? Ah. But it does kind of integrate that, like, slow time down shooting mm-hmm. with real-time shooting. Mm-hmm. So that feels does feel more, more cohesive and a little better. But then they also added all this crafting stuff. You can make craft chemicals and food and armor and guns and, and you can build, um, the settlements thing has really been eating a lot of my time is you can make settlements and I mean, you can't get super building. You can build like shacks and buildings and stuff and get pretty extravagant. Um, the, the way you go about building is a little frustrating. It's, it's a little, a little clumsy, 
I mean, I know you're working with blocks in Minecraft, but you can't, it's not like you can quite build anything your mind can conjure. You have mm-hmm. to work with certain pieces, but, um, it is that element of build yourself a town and then people will come and live in that town and you got to supply resources. And, um, so there's like a resource management and all that. It's, it's pretty cool. And, I, and I've been playing it and Mel's got a, a kind of an older computer. So she's been in here playing fallout three. She's handling it pretty well. Thanks. <laughs> not, not too much screaming. Yeah. Except I, when things fall from the sky on my head. Well, I feel bad because I know you're still enjoying fallout three mm. and you're also the type that if you don't feel like you're done with fallout three, you're not going to play fallout four. Right. Um, but I feel bad cause I'm in there like, Oh, this is awesome. And you're out here playing fallout <laughs> three from like eight years ago or something. Yeah, it's okay. But you'll you'll be playing it soon. I know. Does that hold up? Fallout what, Fallout 3? 3? Yeah. 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 I like That's it. That's the only thing that matters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If it holds up. And I get a little bit of, like, when I come out, visually, um, Fallout 4, like, they kind of reintroduced colors into this apocalyptic wasteland. But I do <laughs> come out, I'll come out and and look at hers and be like, oh, I do kind of like that. that I like that place. Mm-hmm. I mean, even though it's a horrible... A desolate place, but Fallout Three feels more like um, a wasteland western, yeah, than the than the new one does. Um, mainly because of the color palette and also kind of the look of it. And so, if it weren't for all the crafting stuff, I think it wouldn't be that hard to bounce back to Fallout Three. But then I'm like, I want to make a settlement. Yeah, I want to make a settlement too. <laughs> I'm excited for it. So, yep, that's our Fallout talk. <laughs> Well, you know, it, it uh, actually reminded me um, that the uh, video game uh, that John Mueller was telling us about, uh, Bedlam. Mm-hmm. Oh, what's what's the game? Oh, it's Skyshine. Skyshine's Bedlam is out, and it's on Steam, and I was just eyeballing it the other day. Oh, yeah. How did I miss that? I was like, uh, I, you know, actually, I missed it, too, and I just saw that he uh, tweeted about it, or, or there was a Facebook post about oh, it. Man on one of his things. And I was like, Oh man, I was, you know, I thought I was going to be really on the spot with this, but, uh, I let that one slip off my radar, but it's, it's out and it's been out and you can get two different versions of the game on steam at least. Um, and I'm not sure what all platforms it's on, but it's definitely on steam and you can get a deluxe version that has, um, the soundtrack for the game for like an extra 10 bucks or something. Oh, cool. Or you can get just the base game. Mm hmm. So that might be some of my Christmas money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it's been the last couple of months, despite the fact that I've been saying I've been just consuming a lot of entertainment, has been kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And y- you've seen Super Busy, Jesse. Oh, um, I have been. <laughs> and and I've even noticed, like, the other day, I was like, man, I haven't heard from Jesse for a little while. And I pulled up your your, your Twitter, and I was like, oh, he hasn't. he's been busy because... There hasn't oh, yeah, been yeah. a lot of activity on your Twitter account, so no. And I usually like to tweet a couple times, you mm-hmm. know, like at least once a day. But there have been days where I just like forget about it entirely. It's a pretty good barometer for how busy is Jesse. When was the last time he he sent out a tweet or retweeted something? Oh, it's been a couple of days. Holy crap, he's, <laughs> he's doing things. Yeah. And and you ask me today what what did I even do? And I probably can't can't tell you. I don't know. <laughs> But that's kind of holidays too, and, yeah. and not just holidays. It's winter's coming. Uh-huh. It's all the stuff you have to get done before it's too cold to do all the stuff. Winter's coming, or at least for winter, me, that's, winter that's is what coming. A lot of it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had to chip ice off of my car already, so that was a bad day. Yeah, Oof. ten minutes of scraping on a freaking car window. Can't believe even when, even when you leave like the heat on. Mm-hmm. Like you could have the heat on for 15 minutes and it's still like, oh, well, I just burned a lot of gas and I still have to do this. Yeah. Yeah. I can look at, I think I still have some of that ice, de-icer spray. I was wondering about that. I yeah. could probably get some at, you know, yeah, at but the I, store, but I like bought like 12 bottles of it because they were on sale for 50 cents. Oh yeah, you did. You loaded up. You had like a crate of this de-icer de- somewhere. I know. I just got to find it. <laughs> Buried under my crates <laughs> of random junk. Let's see. We caught up. To- to last season of Arrow and then realized we're still seven episodes of Arrow behind. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk? How far did you get into Jessica Jones? I'm done. Ooh. We powered through. We did the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. We've, and it, it is epic. So it's worth your time. It's not going to be a thing where you go, oh, I mean, we, if it was not enjoyable, 
we would not have done that in two days. Two days. <laughs> Jeez, yeah. That's, that's, yeah all, that's, that's all we did. That's pretty good. <laughs> it's because of the ice. Uh, Thanksgiving, the ice storm hit, and uh, that's basically what we did that day. Yeah. After we realized we weren't going to get turkey, we went and uh, just watched Jessica Jones nonstop. Okay. We're only two episodes in. The first episode, I was a little cold at the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, but by the end, it, it definitely grabbed me because Kilgrave seems very evil. Mm-hmm. Like they seem to be setting him up, setting him up to be very evil. So, um, yeah, two episodes in we're it's, it's interesting. I'm into it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. He's, and he's actually less evil in the show than he is in the books. Really? Really? Wow. Books, yeah. In the books, you really just get this absolutely, um, unredeemable idea about him. And, uh, in, in the show, as you go along, he becomes a little bit more, um, I don't want to say, I don't know, like, like you almost feel bad for him. You almost, I don't want to say you identify with him, but you can kind of see where he's coming from mm. kind of thing. Like, oh, that's why you are the way you are. Gotcha. Well, that's, that's also good writing too. That's kind of what made, um, uh, was it Kingpin in mm-hmm. Daredevil such an interesting character in the series, in yeah. the TV show, I mean. Yeah, Netflix right. It's show. not because it was D'Onofrio. Well, D'Onofrio played him interestingly. Yeah. But <laughs> he wasn't just a two dimensional bad guy. Yeah, yeah. Like there was definitely a lot of like unexpected depth to the character. So yeah, that's mm-hmm. good writing. I could say so far, Netflix seems like they are just nailing it with these mm-hmm. series, with these properties. And the interesting thing is, uh, it's so different than the book. I mean, like it's it's familiar, but I read I read the whole run of Alias and uh they throw all sorts of things at you that don't exist in that story. Like um Patsy Walker, she's not in it. There's another character, he's not in it. I mean, these are all characters that are in the Marvel universe, but they pull them in in an interesting way and it kind of fixes it kind of fixes the way that um you needed these characters. Um like in the book it's Carol Danvers and Jessica Jones was in the Avengers. Well, we know that those things haven't happened because we haven't even seen Carol Danvers yet. Mm -hmm. So to see her as a non-Avenger in Jessica Jones wouldn't work. So instead, we've got Patsy Walker that somehow is super duper interesting. I like what they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. I give it two big, big thumbs up. I do well for the first two episodes. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> One and two, thumb and thumb. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, it's hard to talk about something like that when we're not that far in, and probably anyone who might listen to this has already watched the whole thing. It'll be interesting to see what you guys think as you get further. I mean, you're you're one episode away from some real uh, interaction with uh, Kilgrave, and that's when it gets interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this this whole, all of my preparation for this episode just didn't quite fall, go as far as I'd hoped. I wanted to watch the original Star Wars trilogy, and I got through two. We only got through two episodes of Jessica Jones. We read one of the two Daredevil stories. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, darn you, uh, Thanksgiving, I'll blame. <laughs> <laughs> I am not thankful for Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, Henceforth, it shall be known as Gravy Day. Well, and, and, okay, so Doctor Who, at this, at the time of recording, and it's no secret, we say it pretty much every episode, we typically record about a week before the episode goes up. Um, and Jesse is behind the current episode that's aired. And by the time this episode goes up, the season, will, the series, um, series nine will be over. I believe yeah. the final episode, the final, the finale is the Saturday before this goes up. Okay. So I've seen uh, Face the Raven, but I have not yet seen um, the, Heaven Sent. Heaven Sent. Yeah, yeah, Heaven Sent. So, um, yeah, there's there's a lot that could be said about that, but in a way, it might be better if we can just if we can do it after the seasons the series is over anyway. We'll mm-hmm. have a better overview, um, but right. we can talk about Clara. Yeah, yeah. good um, riddance. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing we. Uh, Jesse and I were messaging a little bit about it and 
I feel Stephen Moffat. I'm just gonna blame him. He's the showrunner. He's the guy to blame. Mm-hmm. Um, under undermined himself. Like I think that whole bit was supposed to, should have more weight than it did. Mm-hmm. But since we're so used to Clara dying but not being dead, or mm-hmm. being dead and turning up as somebody else mm-hmm. over and over, like every season she's been in, yeah, that yeah. that you can't even like. You can't watch it and like you can't really get that invested because you're like, oh no, she's not dead. Because why would she? She died. Yeah. She never dies. Mm-hmm. Or she always dies. Or Either she way. always dies. You know, yeah. like we're just gonna see her again somewhere else in along his timeline. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. you could pluck another Clara out of the timeline. Yeah, that's a good point. And you know, it's that's the problem with taking because. It, it, with the exception of the, some of the villains, Doctor Who didn't really, and I know we've talked about this before, but Doctor Who didn't really have the comic book death rules problem. Mm-hmm. I mean, the master would come back over and over again, but like companions, mm-hmm. if they typically, if they died, they were dead and it was a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but since it's been so comic booky, where really none of the companions, when they die, stay dead. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and in fact, most of them end up not going out of the series that way anyway. They get stuck in some alternate dimension or stuck in a certain time frame that the doctor cannot travel to now. Yeah. Um, I have more respect for Martha Jones now than I ever did uh, watching her series. Yeah. Yeah. Because she just leaves of her own volition. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Like she survives it. <laughs> she just, she doesn't wind up with a crazy mind wipe. She doesn't mind wind up in some alternate dimension. She doesn't uh, get locked into an alternate timeline, fixed point in time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, she she gets out. Good for her and Mickey yeah. too. Somehow, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very well, Mickey, Mickey didn't seem like he ever really even wanted to be there. Right, right. It, it, Mickey didn't seem like or anybody wanted him to be there, <laughs> including the writers. <laughs> Like he was just kind of there sometimes, but yeah, they did bring him back and made an attempt. They to were make like, him a stronger "We need character. someone to, we need someone to complain." So we'll bring back Mickey and uh, Rose's mom. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we'll yeah. Bring, bring back Jackie and Mickey, and now we have someone to complain. <laughs> now let's just cast Catherine Tate. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, Which I'm pretty excited to see that they're doing a big finish with her, though. I mean, that's that's cool for a couple reasons. That minute a minute and a half clip that they've released is like spot on. So yeah, they're totally they're doing that's new doctor stuff right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. New Doctor, new Who, Big Finish audio play stuff. And when this comes out, uh potentially we will have um War Doctor. Because was it War Doctor's coming out? I think War Doctor's coming out on the fourteenth or thirteenth or something. So mm-hmm. um yeah, this episode will have been up. Yeah. Okay. Well, as soon as they announced they were going to start using like new who bad guys, new who villains in the yeah, I was like, oh, well that that's it. That's like that means they've opened the doors to the new who universe, and mm-hmm. it's only a matter of time before we get you know new Doctor stories, yeah. um, or modern. I guess you call them modern Doctor stories. Uh, and actually, they didn't wait nearly as long as I thought they would. All right. Like it was like what a month, two months before they announced like, hey, yeah, they started with Unit and then Torchwood came back and I was like, whoa, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. And then it, yeah, and then the classic monsters came out, classic or classic Doctors, new monsters, and then boom, it was uh, River Song and uh, Winston Churchill, and then boom, it was was it War Doctor next? Yeah, I think so. Yep. And then the most recent has been the Tenth Doctor mm-hmm. set, which will be a limited like three story run box set kind of thing. Pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and well, I mean, I guess John hurt, John hurt war doctor was kind of surprising, but of the new doctors, it would be tenant that would come back to, mm-hmm. to do big oh, finish sure. stuff. Cause he oh, seems sure. to really like doing that audio stuff. Mm-hmm. And he seems like, I mean, maybe Matt Smith, I don't know. Maybe he's doing the like distance himself thing right now but tenant really seems to always have embraced it mm-hmm. yeah even after he left he was you know seemed to really yeah enjoy the doctor who thing 
I, I would be surprised if Matt Smith doesn't come back to it at some point. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's still pretty. He's he's only been out of it for what two seasons, so yeah, he's got to try to. And man, it seems like I mean, I guess it's been a couple of years, but it's been a fast couple of years. So yeah, yeah, um, doesn't seem like it's been that long. Because there's, you know, when you go through so much Doctor Who, so much old Doctor Who, and then you're like, really, this is all we get? This little yeah, is all that we get of of the current yeah stuff that doesn't seem right. Yeah, yeah, um. So, they killed Clara, at mm-hmm. least at the time of recording. Yeah. Um, who knows what's going to happen in the next episode, which has already been, which has already aired when you hear this. But yeah, if something crazy happens, maybe I'll insert a little something here. Yep, I thought yep. so. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did like uh, the awesome like tattoo stuff going on. I don't necessarily know that i liked it being a bird i mean it makes the, sense the, the, it's a raven, but... the smoke monster from lost <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> quantum shade that was a very unusual episode mm-hmm. um i mean it was kind of cool but it was like there was just a lot of weird things going on yeah. a lot of weird ideas thrown in there mm-hmm. and well, Maisie williams character seemed different too i mean like mm-hmm. she's a different character but she just felt awkward in this i don't know why yeah i kind of agree Mm -hmm. because it's kind of like you brought her back for that you could have put anybody in that role Uh Mm uh-huh well again she was kind of the villain kind of not i mean she was kind of like a villain but not coming from like a necessarily of as far as we know a vindictively evil place Mm -hmm. right but i don't think it handled that as well as the second episode she was in mm-hmm. where she literally bounced between being the villain and being kind of a companion. Yeah. Um, you know, it was almost, but not quite, but then again, it was, it was like a, it was a different situation, but it was almost like when the master would do something and they'd be like, Oh no, what have I done? You have to help me. You mean every master story that's ever been told. Right. right. <laughs> but, but instead it was like, Oh no, what have I done? I'm sorry. She's going to have to die now. Yeah. And you're going away. My bad. I liked the, it wasn't even so much a conversation. It was Clara's goodbye to the doctor, Mm -hmm. but I liked all that. Um, they've really nailed, I think Capaldi's wrathful, but not, but not really. Um, his doctor, like they've really nailed, like they, they write well for, for Capaldi to play the doctor Mm -hmm. because he does, he does angry and he does that so well Mm -hmm. that they've tied it into his character, um, in a good way. And he emoted most of that without saying so much. Oh yeah, right. for sure. Like the the episode before that, he had that huge. Um, mm-hmm. he, he did this tirade, which was epic. But then this episode, you get a dialed down, just wrathful, angry eye. You had to attack eyebrows again. Mm. Uh huh. Yeah, actually, and a lot of times, yeah, a lot of that. Um, where Clara was talking to him, it's it was all his eyes. Like he mm-hmm. didn't really say hardly anything. After she was like, "No, you don't, don't do that." Whatever. Yeah. It was this was her episode to monologue. It was. <laughs> yeah, it was he, her, her. Capaldi's actually had a couple really big, like big uh-huh. <laughs> monologues, um, in this season. Yeah. And he plays them up big, but they're fun. They're fun yeah. to watch. Uh, the one with the Zygons, where he has the big speech to the one, yeah, the one, yeah. like mm-hmm. Rebel Zygon or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's pretty big, and he even like. Like there's some lights in the ceiling. There's a couple times where it even seems like he intentionally like uses the light. Like he throws his like face up towards it and, and it, like he just yeah chews it, chews the cedar, <laughs> yeah, <he> eats it up. <laughs> um, something that I mean, it's not a big deal, it, and I understand kind of what they were doing, but they could have been more subtle about it in the beginning of the episode when they were in this in the TARDIS and mm. she's like hanging out the door yeah. and being yeah. reckless and whatever. I'm like, you know, okay. Yeah. We get the point, but you don't have to be so, you know, super obvious about it. <laughs> that actually, that bugged me a lot because they have set up that she's kind of been a thrill junkie. Yeah. This, this season, they set it up to where not so much even that, just that the doctor's concerned about it, yeah. which kind of draws your attention to it. Right. Otherwise, it's just her being outgoing. 
Mm-hmm. But in this episode specifically, and that's kind of what makes it bothersome, is that it kind of seemed to be in check until this episode when it was really relevant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, where she's just laughing like a maniac, hanging, ha- dangling from the TARDIS yeah. above the city. Mm-hmm. Um, and I understand what they were doing with it, but it did seem out of place. Mm-hmm. Because she should still get scared of dying. It's yeah. not like yeah. she's... They haven't portrayed her to be that careless up to that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, that ties into her recklessness. Yeah. And her getting herself into this situation. So, I, yeah, I agree. That's, I don't think we'd even talked about that. I talked about that a little bit with Jesse, that that bugged me. But, oh. Yeah. But, no, you and I hadn't talked about Yeah, it. we hadn't talked about it. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Mm-hmm. You got to watch this recent episode, Jesse. Oh, uh, yeah. If we had a little more time between Thanksgiving and, and recording, we would have done it. But it just, we ran home, got ready. Yeah. That was That was how. That's how things work right now is yeah. run for, run from thing to thing. Well, when you get a chance to to relax and check it out, let me know what you think afterwards because it's it's definitely one to, that can be talked about. We didn't talk about this pre-show, but are you guys cut up on Walking Dead? Yes, we are currently well. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're So we can talk about the we can talk about well, yeah, obviously not the episode that's airing tonight, but mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. So we can talk about the 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 thing that's been bugging me since they since they tried to red herring it. The uh, Glenn. Yeah, Glenn is not dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I knew he was not going to be dead because of certain casting choices that they have uh, announced. Hmm. But I just I didn't dig that scene because it was like, come on, mm-hmm. he's scrappy, he's got ways, but. Come on, he fell into a horde of zombies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't really. It doesn't... He got like no, he didn't even get scratched. I mean, like he's beat up, but he should be tore up. Yeah, yeah, he he would have gotten a scratch. And when we get the episode, it must have been this last episode, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which would have been like one or two episodes ago for the listener. Um. The zombies had no interest in him whatsoever. They forgot he was under there. Come on. Yeah. You can yeah. smell him, right? They can smell? Yeah. Yeah. And so if I mean, yeah, they would have he would have at least got scratched and therefore he would have got some kind of infection. Mm-hmm. He yeah, it's not plausible. I knew this is how it was going to play out, mm-hmm. but I'm just disappointed. Yeah. I think the internet's initial like uh backlash, that's the word I was looking for earlier their backlash against it when their that first episode aired and they were like, wait a minute. And I think that kind of prepared me for it because my initial reaction was like, Oh, that's kind of like jumping the zombie shark. But then I think, then I was like, okay, well, whatever they're going to do it. It prepared me for it. So mm-hmm. yeah. Well, and you had several episodes used to the idea that he's probably not dead, but it is a leap. Definitely. Mm-hmm. For sure. It's like he fell. It's like he crowd surfed into <laughs> into a sea of hungry zombies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come on, and oh, and that scene, the first scene that where he did fall in there, um, I think was really effective. If it weren't, um, not real, a lie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, they did it. Yep. And the it's internet didn't waste any time at all on calling it out. They're like, wait a second, this doesn't add up. Yeah. Well, and that, that I didn't know if that should make me mad or not because it was like, what well, well, you know, like, should you be spoiling this for me? You know? I yeah, mean, that's true. Immediately, there were people that were like, "Oh, he's not dead." People, I was like, "Oh, well, thanks." <laughs> you know, now I have to wrestle with that because I was ready to accept that he was dead because he should be. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he should be dead. <laughs> this is a really it's really hard to suspend disbelief on that one i think yeah i mean even even when you're talking about a fictional show about a zombie apocalypse like it's still they still need to adhere to their rules and yeah. there's just a certain point of which you're like no i call i call crap on that mm-hmm. it's just it's too far and you know okay even if they didn't scratch him or whatever there were a a lot of zombies there. They would have, like, stomped on his head and stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. He had to fall through. I mean, like, if you've ever crowd surfed, you don't just fall to the ground. Mm-mm. 
You know, you don't just just boom right through. And with that crush of people there, you would have landed on somebody's shoulders and you would have hung there for a second and they would have taken a bite out of you. Yeah, yeah. if anything, he'd been laying on zombies. Yeah. yeah. Or he would have knocked himself unconscious when he hit the ground. Mm-hmm. I mean, you got one or the other. You're, it was pretty hard to believe that you're not going to have one of those two outcomes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or at least, well, I mean, maybe he did, but at least have the freaking wind knocked out of you with that guy on top of you. Mm-hmm. You'd be stunned for a little while. Mm-hmm. I was not very sure how long he was supposed to be under that, uh, under the, dumpster. under the dumpster because they made it seem like he was there for a really, really long time. But in like, uh, in the amount of days that have passed since they've been missed, they've been gone in the, in, in the, um, whatever settlement or whatever. Yeah. I, I think it's only been like two, one or two days, isn't it? I don't know. It's hard to, it's hard to tell time frame because they have been jumping. I Around mean, not like much, jumping yeah. big chunks of time, but they're jumping back and forth between groups. Yeah. Um, yeah. For full episodes. So yeah. it's, it is kind of hard to nail down what type of time overlap. Right. It's not, oh, what is, it's not like it's a, time, time traveling. Uh, What's his name? Okay. Quick sidetrack. <laughs> we caught up on last season of Arrow, like I mentioned. Uh-huh. Um, we still have a bunch of Arrow to watch to properly catch up. But mm-hmm. I've decided... Merlin. That's it. Merlin. Uh, Captain Jack. I think Merlin is <laughs> Captain Jack. Yeah, He is a wizard in this show. <laughs> yep. He is a straight-up wizard with time travel capabilities. Because there was one episode. It's where... where um, Oh, suddenly I lost all their names. Um, Oliver is kind of being trained to be the new Raish, Raz, whatever, the new yeah. Abdul, Demon's Head. And, <laughs> and so we have a scene where, okay, so we get Merlin is in the, is in, is it still Star City or Starling? Is it, I think, Starling I think City? it's now Star City, but I think it was in transition at that point. Okay, so he's there. And then suddenly, next scene, he's talking to Oliver at a campfire over in Nantucket, wherever it is. <laughs> Nantucket. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> there. Nantucket. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> and which is fine. Scene transition. That's okay. Yeah. But in be- during those scene transitions, we also have um, Speedy, mm-hmm. uh, the little sister. Who he was talking to in. Who- who he was talking to in Star City. Um, she has traveled to whoever, wherever in the country to talk to what's his name. So we have scenes that seem like they're happening at the same time where it's daytime in one place, nine, nighttime in one place. Okay, so they're traveling across the globe. But that makes it even more insane when Merlin is talking to Oliver at this campfire. Merlin leaves and Oliver's talking to the other guy at the campfire. Same campfire. Same night. They're sitting there. The next scene, Merlin is back in Star City already, talking to the group of peoples. We go back to this campfire, and so, like, I'm not explaining it well. Merlin's in Star City. There's a campfire. He's at the campfire across the globe. He's back in Star City. People are still chilling at this campfire. It's wizardry. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nanda Parba clearly got a lot closer than it was <laughs> yeah, yeah. back in season two or whatever. Yeah, I didn't know, but we we skipped part of it. It's because Speedy talked to, what's her name? The blonde. Lauren or Sarah or... Oh, f- f- um... God, her name... Felicity. That's not Felicity. Her name. Oh, Felicity, yeah. Is it Felicity? Okay. Yeah. She talked to Felicity before she left. He talked, he had just talked to her. She left that night. He went to Nanda Parba, came back, Talked to Felicity. She had the same outfit on. It was the same night. He went to Ninda Parbat and back in like a half hour. <laughs> You're right. She did have the same outfit. Oh, wow. Yeah, he did in a half hour. Yeah, it was insane. You could sit around a campfire and yeah, it's in, it is insane. <sighs> but anyway, that was a long. Now, and I understand TV shows will jump around a little bit and mm-hmm. you know, whatever. It's They're just telling the story. But you're right. The costume changes mm-hmm. and the day to, day to night. And back to day, and mm-hmm. none of it adds up. It's all wizardry. Yep. <laughs> because. So Merlin is truly Merlin. I don't think he is Merlin. I think he's Captain Jack in secret. That is a fun, yeah. I mean, Captain Jack's got a long to li- long time to live. He could start this little family. Right, and yeah. Do all that and make he, a he's already a time machine. 
<laughs> he's, he's vortex manipulator. Yep, he's got it under his uh, under his um, assassin suit. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah, and he's constantly he's in an assassin suit. Then he's in a business suit. Then he's in an assassin suit. Yeah. Maybe yeah. he wears one under the other. Yeah. He just wears he's a like, series of them, so he can. He's, just... he's like he's like Damian Dark. He can just he can just rock the powers. Well, okay, sorry, go ahead. But what were we talking about before that? Uh, we were talking about uh, Walking Dead, and uh, we were trying to figure out the the timeline the time, of how right, right, right. he was under there. But uh, you know, like it's all caught up now because everything happens at the end of that last episode where mm-hmm. the balloons go up in the air and the tower comes down mm-hmm. and. They find out that Morgan has a friend hiding, and <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> does. Not, all not come a friend, to... but this is like everything's happening. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. Journey's End of Doctor Who series four. Yeah, <laughs> you know why I've never been able to fly this TARDIS correctly because it's built for this many people. Of course, it is, <laughs> and it's really exciting for me because you know I've read. I'm not quite current. I think I have a couple of issues. Uh, that mm-hmm. I need You're to pretty close to current read, um, but this could be could things could be happening that are exciting from the comic, but I don't know if they're actually going to do them or not. Mm-hmm. So right. I'm excited to find out. And now that I'm reading the comic, you can't spoil it for two I'm not, reasons. I'm not. I'm not going to spoil it. No, I'm I know. Just saying, I know. There's possibly exciting things going to happen. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I've been enjoying. Well, I've been saying this every season. I, I've been. I've been digging the Walking Dead. I think it's, yeah, it's been great. good. I kind of like, and I think it's worked a little better this season, but they've done it for a couple seasons, and I think it's more, it's less from a storytelling perspective and more from like a practical, we have to film this huge cast, but they'll split the cast up, Uh and then they'll do whole episodes where you follow this group, and then they bounce back and forth, and they've been doing that for a couple seasons, and I think it works, and I think this season they've handled it a lot better because we've got less of the the downtime episodes, which I still don't mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, the character building episodes. And we got one of those with, um, kind of filling in the missing bits with the, uh, the, the Zen guy now. Yeah. Um, gosh, no. I forgot his name. Eastman. Is that, was that, is that, was that his name? I liked him. He was awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, so we've been, you know, we got the backstory with him, but I, mm-hmm. I, I like how they've been doing that. And then kind of, yeah, it's, building towards a big boom everything's coming together yep it's been working for me the the glenn thing real quick just people people like him people like him too much mm. mm-hmm. <laughs> so you know get over him <laughs> really quick because hmm he <laughs> is gonna die <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh i was almost like thinking they were gonna put him rescue him from this obviously he should be dead scenario Mm-hmm. And I was almost thinking, how magnificent would it have been if they would have then killed him in another way in that episode? Like immediately. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. would have, like, I mean, it still would have been a leap that he got out of that alleyway. Mm-hmm. But that would have, like, kind of That would have just pushed the, bru- yeah. the brutal button. Uh, yeah. Like, boom. It's like, no, no. We're, I mean, that would have been the ultimate toying with the audience. Oh, yeah. Which is kind of why the Glenn thing is is. Because it's an obviously obvious, we're just jerking, jerking you around here. Uh-huh. That's part of what makes that alleyway thing frustrating. They should have had that it's chick. Very manipulative. They should have had that chick shoot him in the head. I was almost thinking. <laughs> I was almost thinking like uh, him chasing this chick around is going to be the death of him. And how amazing would that be after mm-hmm. they just irritated the internet with this fake out? Yeah. Yeah. I guess we could talk about our pull list pick, guys. Let's do hey, it. Hey, what's that? <laughs> Our poll is, I'm glad you asked. Every month, well, in fact, every day, there is a poll, as in, like, you can vote on, um, on our website. There's several comic books there, graphic novels and whatnots listed on this poll. You can even add your own suggestion. And then every time we go to record a new episode, we pick the one with the most votes. We read that in this we read that in the following month, and then we talk about it on the next episode. So this episode, we're going to talk about the poll, the comic book that had the most votes last month. Which was? Which was Daredevil Yellow. Awesome. And what will we be reading next month? I have not checked it in the last hour it and a half. It is. But it should be. 
Yep, it's the same. It is why the last man with five with uh twenty nine percent of the votes, but identity crisis is uh just just under it. Just under it. Okay. With, well, with one less vote. So why the last man? All right, rock on. Melanie's happy. She gets another vacation. She's read it. Yeah. <laughs> um. I'll, re- I'll reread it. So in and as usual with a situation like that where it's just like the series. We will read the first, whatever equates to the first um, trade paperback, the first collected volume of Why the Last Man. Oh, okay. We're not going to read the whole thing. <laughs> what? what? Well, okay. I mean, I know we it's could, not that we long. We couldn't even read two books this month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I really wanted to, because Daredevil, Man Without Fear, is like the Daredevil I expected to read. That's what I... Yeah. And I, I mean, well, the month is part of the problem, but my, <clears throat> my work stuff is much di- it's much different this year than it has been in previous years and we don't really ha- i don't have any sitting time well and that's to, to read which is what i did a lot of my reading yeah exactly that's when you would usually do a lot of your comic reading and that's been altered this year yeah it's f- altered they screwed it all all up <laughs> everything yeah they we have no time basically in between yeah anymore oh yeah so why the next man is mm-hmm. what we'll be talking about next episode Right. Which will be in 2016. Oh my <gasps> goodness, that's oh, weird. No. By the way, since this is our hap- holiday episode, happy holidays! Happy yeah, holidays. an hour into the episode. <laughs> 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 um, Daredevil Yellow was written by Jeff Loeb, pencils and inks by Tim Sale, colors by Matt Hollingsworth, letters by Richard Starkings. I think that I got that right, and Wes Abbott. It's six issues, uh, obviously commonly collected as a, you know, a graphic novel or a trade paperback. And it was released in 2001 and 2002. This uh, is kind of a power, you know, they're the kind of a power duo, Loeb and Sale. Yeah, so this is the first Daredevil I've ever read. Me too. And my only other point of reference, I mean, I've read some stuff that he's popped up in briefly, but I this is the first Daredevil I think I can remember reading. Obviously, I'm not... Super marveled, Marvel knowledge. I don't think I've even read anything that he's popped up in. So, um, so my only other point of reference is the Netflix series. Me too. Uh, half ha- it, half of our three listeners just tuned out. Yeah. <laughs> don't worry, Jesse knows Marvel. It's okay. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I did not watch the Ben Affleck movie. Oh well, that's okay. Oh, huh. I did, but <laughs> I don't remember like anything. You, you didn't, you didn't miss anything. I, I remember Carl, Colin Farrell, and that's not a good thing to remember. Eh. <laughs> um, is that his name, Colin Firth? No, Colin. I don't know. Yeah, you you had it right the first time, isn't uh, it? Okay. Colin, Colin Farrell, I believe. Is Colin Firth the uh, whose line is it anyway? A guy. Probably, yeah. Well, he would have been great in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see him um, as Bullseye. Uh, just backing up the Tim Sale, uh, Jeff Loeb thing. Uh, they they also did Batman Haunted Night and uh, Batman Dark Victory. That Dark really? Victory is the other one I was thinking. Okay, okay. I have not read Dark Victory or Haunted Night. They sound good though, right? Surely they are because Long Halloween was epic. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, this Daredevil was interesting. Um, I know Jesse had said something about it kind of, uh, as w- does happen in comics a lot, um, re reworks a few things. Yeah. Um, but obviously I don't know what those things are. Mm-hmm. Uh, what kind of, what it did is it kind of tied Frank Miller's run, um, on Daredevil back into the, uh, Stan Lee stuff. So it, it was kind of, it's, it's an interesting bridging situation and it, because it, it comes from a place in the, in the present con- continuity or at least after what Frank Miller does to some of our favorite characters. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, then he kind of gets all introspecty about his past. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you get to throw back to some of those, what would be the daredevil yellow era, which was, uh, Stanley's era. Well, can I just say that I read it and I was like, hey, this is a spoiler from like the very beginning. (laughs) (laughs) It was. It totally was. And I was like, oh, wow. So that's how we're going to open it. (laughs) Yeah. 
But I I don't really read much Marvel, so I did appreciate them uh, bringing in other Marvel characters for me to be, you know, to get some perspective on where he fits in in the Marvel universe. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, the Fantastic Four yeah. uh, bit was pretty amusing. Mm -hmm. I think I think this as a story on its own, um, it definitely feels geared towards people with the knowledge. Mm -hmm. But yeah. but reading it without the knowledge, I think it still works. It's not like your standard story. It's mm -hmm. it's like it is just snippets of a stuff. I mean, there's yeah. kind of a character arc, but there's it's it's here's a moment. Mm -hmm. Here's a moment. Yeah. Each issue is essentially a moment. Yeah. Um, and it does tell a kind of a story of like this relationship situation. Mm -hmm. Um, or the beginning at least. Yeah, the beginning. Um, obviously. Karen dies and I don't know how. Yeah. And that was something reading it. I was like, are we going to find out? Like, how far is this going? Is mm -hmm. this, you know, and I think any Marvel common, common Marvel reader would know. Mm -hmm. So they would have this knowledge. Um, yeah. But I, I was still, I still enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. uh, I was really excited because we had watched an episode or two of, uh, Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones to be like, oh, Kilgrave's in here. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. Yeah. True. Cause he actually was a, he was a daredevil villain first. Oh, was he? Which is what a lot of people probably won't know when they go into Jessica Jones mm -hmm. is that Kilgrave, that's where he started was a daredevil villain. Well, I haven't referred, heard him referred to as the purple man yet. So yeah. Yeah. I don't think he's not purple in the series. Is he? I don't think he is purple. I mean the TV series. There's, there's nods. There's nods which I, you'll get to. I've noticed but. a lot of like the like when she'll have her her kind of freak out moments, the background will fade out to purple or will turn purple and stuff. Oh, I, yeah. I hadn't noticed. Oh, you hadn't noticed that? Yeah. Um, that's cool. But I I, I, I kind of knew to look for that. Mm. They they work it in a little bit, but they don't. Yeah, it's not over the top. He's not like purpley mutant kind of guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an origin story, really, but it kind of was too because it's like. It's not like how I got my powers and stuff, but it's like why I started fighting crime. Yeah. Yeah. It is a why I started fighting crime, but not the whole being blinded thing. Yeah. Like I said, my only real point of reference is the Netflix series. And it was interesting reading this mm -hmm. and thinking of that because, I mean, it's the Netflix series has it's dead on, you know, mm -hmm. you got the two and the little little law office and, and, yeah. and you know, mm -hmm. Karen and stuff. Yeah, except she's not, you know, a murder suspect or anything like that. Well, not that you know of. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> what did you think of the portrayals and the tone? Because this is decidedly more light and fluffy compared to the show. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the show is, I imagine, and from what I've heard, pulls a lot from Man Without Fear. Uh, from, yeah, yeah, Man Without Fear. Um, but it seemed all right. Yeah, it is a lighter tone, but. It still worked because even the show like kept like the relationship like foggy mm -hmm. was the like I guess kind of levity most of the yeah. time in provided levity in the show. Mm -hmm. One thing that kind of bugged me, but it's like, well, they're trying to get the point across. Foggy jumps to buying a wedding ring awfully quick, doesn't yeah, he? They haven't even been on a date yet, as far as I can tell. She's still calling him Mr. Mr. Nelson or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um but I was like, I mean, it seemed ridiculous to me, but I was like, you know what, though? Like, emulating older style storytelling, they would do that. They'd be like, to get the point that yeah. he really likes her, and there's going to be a, a a love triangle frustration thing going right, on. Right. I liked the artwork. I thought it was interesting, um, and it kind of varied a little bit. Sometimes it was, like, a little rougher. Mm -hmm. And then I, I noticed when it was much, like, more defined was, like the very comic booky moments like they'd have um, the few times there'd be like a, a splash page or, or a double page mm -hmm. thing. Um, it'd be like, there's one page where it's got a uh, daredevil punching electro. And oh yeah. Electro such a like out there looking character, but like that was like very well defined and very clean looking and super, I don't want to say cheesy, but like, you know, just very, over like the top. Batman 66 kind of thing. Yeah, very like, yeah, very colorful, mm -hmm. very comic book, like very old school comic book to yeah. where it's, uh, it's, yeah, a little campy, very flashy. 
Yeah. I, I appreciated too that, that, cause I don't think we've really seen him fight in, in the show, uh, an actual like, um, like super special villain? power mm-hmm. or super powered villain mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and not just, you know, a bad guy. Yeah. And you know, he does it like the one he sets off the sprinklers and stuff like that. He mm-hmm. does, uh, the, the few times we see it here, he, he does bring, he handles being a lower powered superhero, mm-hmm. um, a more normal, well, he's still super powered, but, uh, he, they do well at leveling the playing ground. Yeah. For the playing field for, for yeah. him. Yeah. Um, or he levels it for the other guy, whatever. Right. Cause he's Batman. Because <laughs> he's Batman. <laughs> he should be Batman. Yeah. He kind of, I mean, a little bit, a little bit. He's, he's, cause he's a normal dude. He's not rich, but he's got the, he doesn't necessarily have the money. Well, he is a lawyer, but he doesn't necessarily have the money, but he's got the senses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's blind and he uses uh, something other than sight to. He uses uh, sonar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like a bat word. Yeah. Right. Because <laughs> <laughs> they, um, I can't remember how much they went into like him taking vengeance in in the TV series, but like in this, they really fast forward through him hunting down the fixer. Mm-hmm. Like in in um, the Man Without Fear, it's much more systematic, and it's much more like I'm taking them, I'm t- taking each piece out. Like you were part of this, you're gone. You were part of this. You're you're gone, and then it it slowly gets to the fixer. And in this one, it was kind of like, "Where's the fixer? Where is he?" Yeah, yeah. And then boom, they get right to the fixer. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous a little bit too because he's like, "I'm going to beat you up," and then he's like, "Turn yourself in," and he does. Who does that? <laughs> you know, it is. It's true. He did turn himself in, but he had the. I mean, he did go kind of hardcore. Like he he had the gun to the guy's head. Yeah, and he chased the one guy till the guy had a heart attack, and then he waited for police to show up. And be like, "This guy's dead." Yeah, I know. <laughs> Here, <Yeah>. take him. <laughs> yeah, and testify. That, <laughs> and that that very unusual owl character, who I'm not familiar yeah. with. Me either. Oh, owl, that's Owsley. Owl in the show. That's supposed to be Owsley. Oh, oh. the uh, older gentleman with glass. He has. Oh. A, does he have glasses? I didn't yeah, know he, he could fly. Yeah, he has powers in the in the in the book. Oh, interesting. Okay. Okay, I didn't make that connection. Um, he, I mean, the guy didn't die, but it seemed like uh, he just straight up tried to drown the guy, and was, like, mm-hmm. like yeah. just he didn't seem to have a problem with just these people dying and him and being like, "All right, job done." Yeah, yeah. Daredevil's uh, Daredevil doesn't like actively seek out killing people, but he's kind of okay with it. <laughs> is that yeah. is that kind of a Daredevil thing? Uh, well, at least in the Miller runs, okay, he's, he's much okay. darker. Yeah, uh, and this is this is like giving you a taste of that, but not the full, the full deal. Sure, you know? okay, yeah. I thought that was yeah. that was interesting, and I was not quite expecting it because you're right; he didn't actively murder these people, but he didn't seem that bothered if people died. Mm-hmm. I mean, if these bad guys died, I did. Like- this is this is ambitious because they're they're hearkening back. I mean, like we read some of the Stanley era in Bring On the Bad Guys, mm-hmm. and that's what these guys are trying to recapture is a little bit of that camp. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, it's really hard to make that hardcore and brutal because it's all wisecracking. You, yeah. you know, you're not going to get away with this, mm-hmm. bad man. You. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but you know what? I think that this book made me like karen less oh yeah probably really? yeah because she's a lot more hoity-toity in this uh-huh. or shallow she's a lot more shallow in this yeah she is and okay for first of all it's pretty obvious that foggy is trying to get her attentions and if she doesn't notice that then she's stupid but <laughs> probably she does and she just doesn't care because she's her and uh you know She'd rather have the other guy, and then no, she'd rather have Daredevil because he's a superhero. <laughs> I, it's like, uh, uh. sure, sure, I see what you're saying. Um, it's like Lois Lane doesn't like Clark, Clark Kent, but she's in love with Superman. That's crap. It's all crap. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, yeah, no, that's a valid point. Um, they do that in a lot of comics, though. But that is also kind of. 
and maybe they still do that in a lot of comic stories and stuff, but that is also kind of calling back to. Yeah, it's definitely a Golden Peter Parker style. Peter Parker can't oh, yeah. decide between mm-hmm. the supermodel or the future supermodel and Mary Jane or Gwen Stacy. Come on. And he's the unlucky guy. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boo hoo, Peter Parker. <laughs> uh, um, I guess he is an orphan. And he was molested. What? Yeah. He oh, got yeah. molested by an uncle. That's true. There is that. Oh, no. You haven't heard this? Oh yeah, that's oh. it's. There are many uh, articles on online about um. Uncle Ben was a bad, bad. Oh man. no, no, maybe it wasn't an uncle. It might have been like a friend, <laughs> Ben or friend of a fa- the family or something. Yeah, it was something like that. Yeah, not, not Uncle Ben. I forgot he was. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, suddenly, that that throws a big wrench into the Spider-Man origin. Uh, a yeah. little bit. <laughs> um, no, yeah, it was. Well, it was like a. Uh, very special episode of yeah. dealing with that kind of thing in which I can't remember if he was P- Peter Parker at the time or dressed up as Spider-Man, but um, he knew some kid that was dealing with this and he admitted that, you know, he too was, was touched or something. Oh, oh yeah. They um, tried to go there. Yeah. And, and every so often you get, you know, the internet, some random website will be like, Hey, remember when this happened? Yeah. Insane issues of, comics where this happened and yeah exactly mm-hmm. like the episode or like the like the issue of uh superman where he's a hobo mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh man superman covers like he covers it all he gets it mm-hmm. all <laughs> yeah they, they <laughs> i've read i've looked through several articles that are just like look at this crazy <laughs> superman cover from the uh when everybody was racist and sexist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I heard a weird Superman, like, what are those? Theory? Mm-hmm. That um, he's in love with his mom, and that's why he's with Lois Lane. Oh, the LLs. Mm-hmm. Oh. Because a lot of the women in Superman's lives was... LLs? Yeah, Lois Lane or Lana Lallentime. What's, what's I can't name? remember the name. <laughs> Names oh, are... Man. You know what? tryptophan i'm i'm blaming turkey because we are just yeah. blinking on, i'm i'm personally blinking on all these names to this episode it doesn't matter none Look of this it matters up. doesn't it's all matter on the internet you know better than we do listener come on <laughs> and that's so, why you listen to the show so you can correct us so you, you never do us. nope you you can correct us at uh letters at grolicspodcast.com please yep. do i checked that i checked the inbox today and what 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 was it all i remember Oh, I remember. Uh, there's some super easy to use editing software that I should give a try. <laughs> oh yeah. That, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's, Uh-oh. That's, what are they trying to say? What are you trying to say, listener in our inbox? That was a uh, yeah. Or complete spam out of left field. Yeah. yeah. Yep. That was that was our. Uh, that's our. If this <laughs> if this was a comic book, our letters page would be pretty pretty sad, <laughs> and and a lot of free ad- advertisement. Yeah. Yep. To very suspicious looking companies and products. <laughs> My favorite was the comic with the hot sauce. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> the pro wrestler comic with the hot sauce. And that was legit. I kind of regret yeah. regret not jumping on there. If we don't get back to if anybody legit writes in about like an interview, if if you're a creator of some time or some of some kind, I apologize for not getting back to you right away. It happens. Mm-hmm. Um, but sometimes there's things that we're like, oh man, no, nah, let's not do that. Yeah, that can't be real. <laughs> That's not real, is it? It was, but it was so strange. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go into too much details, but. No, no, because it, it, it takes a lot of work to put together hot sauce that ties into your comic property. It was such yeah. a strange pitch. <laughs> it was such a strange pitch. That's the thing. It was kind of all over the place. It was a scattered pitch. We we we're a comic book company or we're a comic book publisher and we, you should also try our line of hot sauce and and you can find and, our characters on backpacks in Walmart. <laughs> like I've never seen this backpack in Walmart. <laughs> yeah, I, it guess, was, I guess I don't go through the backpack aisle as often as I used to. It was a pretty strange pitch. It's next to the trapper keepers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Are trapper keepers still a thing, or do they just call it something different now? I don't. I don't, I, I don't know because I think Trapper Keeper specifically was a brand. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but, but man, they were the thing. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, you, you had to have a trapper keeper. You had to have a cool one too. And trapper they, keepers were like how. Mm-hmm. Oh man. Like binders, you snap them open the metal rings or whatever. Uh-huh. But trapper keeper made them plastic, and you had to pull a pull like a switch, and it would slide. Yeah, <laughs> it would slide apart as opposed to the snap. And more important than anything you put inside, the outside had to look cool. Oh yeah, uh-huh. and it had to have the flap. Yep. Uh, I the apparently I, did, flap. I I didn't go to those kind of schools. I guess ours was <laughs> you you had to wrap your books in brown paper in bags so we that had you to could do that draw too. on them. Yeah, yeah we had to do that too for sure. But you also had to have a trapper keeper for I all. Think of I, had your... anything. I don't think that, I think I had wide or binder. wide or or uh, college rule mm-hmm. paper depending on what grade you were. Yeah, but I had, I I think I either had individual notebooks or I had uh, like a five subject notebook, and that was it. I didn't have I never uh, had a folder. You could have put those notebooks inside of a trapper keeper. in a trapper keeper because they have the holes. They would have kept. Your subjects. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to phrase that in a way that didn't sound would really it, awkward. Would, would keep the trap. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they kept it all. Kept the trap. That that it's a trap. Yeah. <laughs> so if you had a Akbar. if you had a Akbar, why didn't they do that? Why didn't I ever see a trap oh, keeper? Oh man, with, they missed the boat on that. Yeah, with Colonel was it Colonel Akbar? Admiral. Admiral. Oh God! See, I already admitted I'm not <laughs> a big. Demoted Star Wars him. Guy. Demoted him. <laughs> well, this is early in his career when he was doing trapper keeper appearances, and it said <laughs> it's a trap. Trapper <laughs> keeper. Oh, I, I want someone to out there. Uh, surely, someone on the internet has done that. Yeah, there's exactly. got to be a custom trapper keeper out there that is Admiral Akbar. Or you could get the cheap knockoff trapper keepers. And they just stick her over it and hope nobody noticed. They noticed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we all knew. Well, that makes me sad because I always got crap because I wanted like the Adidas shoes, but instead I had the ones with like four stripes instead of three. And then people would make fun of me. Cause oh, I, yeah. Because I had the fake shoes. <laughs> Classism and, and all that rampant yeah. in school. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh nice. yeah. There's some, there's some epic ones. You just do a, uh, a Google image search and you've got a, it's a trap trapper keeper. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh man. And then there's like a cartoon one of uh, of like Admiral Akbar in his teens, and he's got like braces and stuff. And he's just like, "That's a trapper keeper." Uh, uh, it's so, epic. So Daredevil Yellow. Yeah. <laughs> back, back to that. Daredevil Yellow is all like. <laughs> <laughs> you, you you could. Keep it in a trapper keeper. You could put Daredevil Yellow in a trapper keeper. That's yeah. You just it's a subject. It would keep it safe. Wouldn't you have to punch holes in it then? No. You just put it in uh, there. It might slide out the bottom. There's but the, there's a, yeah, there's a flap though. So yeah. as long as you like hold it a certain way, it'd be fine. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. And how many times did your comics follow the trapper keeper? I mean, come on. Yeah. I never put my comics in a trapper keeper. Well, you wouldn't have got caught so often. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I never got caught. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>, I did. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we'll wrap this Daredevil Yellow up because I don't have a lot to say. It really is kind of like each issue is here's a moment. They don't necessarily connect, but it's got like an emotional arc. Mm-hmm. And that's really kind of what, I mean, that's the big ongoing narration is, um, uh, Daredevil is basically his narration is like writing a letter to Karen who has died Mm -hmm. and it's basically him kind of working through their the beginning of their relationship but also like the beginning of him being Daredevil Mm -hmm. or kind of the beginning of their relationship it doesn't even necessarily end with them getting together or anything no it but it'd be it's like the beginning of their relationship was the beginning of him becoming a superhero mm-hmm. and him discovering all of these things about himself kind of and whatever is, is kind of what it's about. And him going to the red costume that kind of end with him going to the red costume. Yeah. Because yeah. of her. Because of her. And yeah, yeah. I liked it. Um, again, it did feel like something for somebody who knew anything about daredevil, but I didn't feel in the dark. It was just like, Hey, here's, Here's some stuff. Yeah. Little snippets hey, of stuff. Hey, that... hey, the very first paragraph, we're going to 
we're going to tell you that Garen dies. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But as a storytelling device, I think that works because you've oh, yeah, got that yeah. in your mind then the whole time mm-hmm. as he's interacting with her and, mm-hmm. and the whole foggy yeah, thing. I really like the way they, they did set that up and, and not just like him writing the letter, but him talking about writing the letter too and, you know, using it to help him figure out how he feels about things. And I did enjoy the art because, for example, the thing smashes through their wall, mm-hmm. <laughs> which is ridiculous. Yeah. But then you've got the outside of the building shot, and it's like a full page. Oh, um, yeah. It's yeah. like watercolored, too, I think. If it's not watercolored, <laughs> it's at least digitally painted to look like it's a watercolor. Yeah, yeah. And it's one of those pages where it reminds me of older, like, reading certain comics when I was younger, where, like, it's got the Fantastic Four. What do you call it? Their vehicle. The fantastic oh, the Fantastic Car. car. Yeah, and and all of them are in it, and and Reed is like stretched from up there down to the front door, and and then there's all these people in the background like looking at it, and it was one of those pages where it reminded me of like just these things that you'd see when you're a kid, where it's just like a page with all this stuff going on, and so you're just kind of looking at the different things in the background. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was that was pretty fun. Yeah, I, cool. I, I kind of hate those a little bit. Just because I'm always reading on my phone mm. and I can't look at the whole thing. And sometimes I don't know it's a big page if it's not drawn a certain way. And I'll like start reading and I'll read the whole page and then I'll go to the next one and be like, oh, well. You're supposed to read I, from here to there. Yeah. And, and then yeah. De- and then down. So I messed up the way the conversation flow was supposed to go. But mm-hmm. but that's my own problem. Sorry. Um, How does his baton thing work? Because he's got like a whip rope thing that he sw- swings on, but I never really understand how that works. Yeah, I'm Those not are- sure. I, that baton is in, you know, that rope is in there, but it's it's like it's, it's just like, like the uh, when the, he needs it, it's it's, it's already like, attached to something and he's swinging on it. It's like those little um uh fake uh laser swords, you and they slide out. Oh, <laughs> and it's, it's like half that and half the slappy wrist brace bracelets, you know. <laughs> So you like flip it out and they go, and then it gets, you know. Yeah, <laughs> slappy wrist bracelets and trapper keepers, so he doesn't lose his lawyer paperwork when he's swinging to the office. And lightsabers. Yeah. And lightsabers, it's all coming around. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I did like, I liked how, you know, I like how he used the batons. Mm-hmm. The baton is that what it is? Yeah, it's some kind yeah. of a baton. Yeah, baton. yeah, I think they refer to it as a, a police Knight, baton. Is it a nightstick? Is that what they call it? I thought they said police baton, it's but pain, I could be wrong. It's a pain rod. I like how a he like pain rod. He, he he you know he'll bounce it around off of things. Um, yeah. They make good use of that, and yeah. it's portrayed well in the art. Mm-hmm. Um, I like how, um, and I don't know if they've done this. Maybe they've done this in the past, but like when the Purple Man, when Kilgrave uses his powers, like he, they're they're all purple in this. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I've seen him. Uh, portrayed that way also uh, this is the first time where i thought oh yeah he kind of looks like uh david Tennant. oh yeah yeah he kind of has like more of a like a tony stark look or you know in in some of the other books that i've seen him in Mm -hmm. Um, if if he can just be like you're going to use that key and unlock the door and let me out how did he even get end up in jail in the first place he's like you're not going to arrest me i'm gonna walk away yeah yeah, I kind of question that too. Um, it, it comes to light a little bit in the series. You know, okay, it'll start to make sense, oh, okay. and and it's even more. Um, you know, you 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 also have to realize in in the larger Marvel universe, we've got people like Jean Grey. Yeah, we've got Xavier, and they pull those people in. Oh, okay, when so it's not like whenever you've got something like this, where it's like, oh, I'm just going to mind control you. Oh, well, we've got a guy for that. You can't just wear like a tinfoil hat or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Although Murdoch seems okay. Yeah. Because he can't yeah. see the color. Or, oh, yeah. Or, or something. Or something. Yeah. At least in this, that's how it seemed to work. Mm-hmm. I mean, he says, he, you know, in this case, he was, he's lucky he's blind and, or specifically colorblind. Ah. Uh, he makes kind of a crack about it. I would recommend it to someone who. Doesn't know a lot about Daredevil because it does kind of throw some key, I think, key Daredevil history moments in. Mm-hmm. And if somebody does like Daredevil, then this is really written for you. Yep. It's kind of a fun, um, like time elapsed. Like if you if you don't want to go back to that era, 
but you want to see just a snippet of what it was kind of like, this is a good way to ingest it. Because trying to go back and read uh, the Stan Lee properties, you've got to have, you've got to really want to read those. So I don't really want to read those. I was going to say, this is all, <laughs> this would be a lot easier way to read a little bit of that. I do want to find out how Karen died, but I can just look that up, I suppose. Well, and that that would make a great read, too. Um, I think that was early on in Frank Miller's run. Oh, okay. You need to read some of that. Yeah. Well, add it to the... Jesse's already read it. No, I'm, not, huh? I'm not saying... Oh, I, yeah. I think I'm going to read it. For our personal it. time. Yeah, I'm going to read I it would, anyway. I would read it. I, I would yeah. read it, all this stuff again. I, I reread uh, Man Without Fear, and I hadn't read it in such a long time that a lot of it was kind of new to me again. Mm -hmm. Like I, I just forgot how much, I mean, I knew people had said that, uh, they were basically pulling off of it for the show, which made sense. Um, but there was a lot of things that were also tweaked that I totally forgot. So it was worth reading. I'll, I'll read it. It's on my phone. You started it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I read, I read the first, I got almost halfway through. Mm -hmm. So you got through the, did you get through the fixer stuff then? So you got to see how the origins kind of were changed or extended. Maybe. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Cause I was, oh, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. All of the stuff with stick came from man without fear. Oh, okay. Interesting. All right, guys. All right, guys. All right. And gal. Yeah, that's right. I am a gal. <laughs> I suppose I could take this time to mention uh, we are on the uh, Electronic Media Collective Podcast Network. You should definitely check that out. And speaking of most likely coming in 2016, oh boy, we added a new show that uh, you'll want to keep an eye out for or an ear out for. But I don't know if that's uh, for far enough along that anybody wants to talk about it or not. <laughs> I, I could try. I could try. Um, so I am looking to start another podcast, um, called the turning cartwheels podcast. And, uh, it's all about, uh, the fact that I am an art teacher. So I, uh, teach off of a cart. So I'm literally turning cartwheels and I also teach martial arts where I literally turn cartwheels. <laughs> and so, so that's, that's the, that's the name. That's the joke behind the name. Cause, uh, right off the bat, I need some puns and, uh, <laughs> 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 like the, the drive of the podcast is going to be kind of like, um, you know, I mean, we've got so many of these like personal improvement, self-help, positive thinking podcasts out there. And, uh, you know, I, I suppose that this kind of fits in there because I want to do a, I, I want to do a podcast about how, yeah, how I have fun at work because, you know, like work gets really overwhelming and, uh, and it's easy to kind of lose sight of what you even enjoy in a job, mm. even if it's like a terrible job, you know, like I've, I've had a lot of jobs. Like I was a telemarketer and most people don't go, gee, I really just wish that I could go back to telemarketing, <laughs> you know, like after they get out, they don't say that, but at the same time, you know, do you have memories that you enjoyed from that old, terrible job? Of course I do. And so that's, that's kind of what I was thinking is, uh, it's going to be kind of, it's going to be kind of a uh, positive thinking type of, uh, podcast but without being what we've kind of gotten used to which is this advice laden saccharine sweet sure sure uh, you know people that you can't relate to and i work hard <laughs> you know i mean like mo like most people i work hard and uh and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna be real about it and uh and say that uh yeah not everything i do at my job is fun but i do have a lot of fun at my job because you have to that's how you that's how you make it through a week and same thing with like the things that we do for fun you know uh putting together a podcast is a lot of fun but i am learning there is an awful lot of like learning and work and and just kind of almost like data entry and uh -huh. editing and i mean like there's a lot to know so much to know you got to know about websites you got to know about recording you've got to know about your equipment you've got to know about uh, analytics and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's great. It's crazy the amount of work that goes into something that you just kind of do for fun. 
Same thing with like martial arts, you know, martial arts is a lot of fun, but it's a lot of work. A lot of the things that we do as a hobby tend to really involve a lot of work. So mm-hmm. well, that's, that's kind of where I'm going with it. That's why I'm glad that Randy likes to do all this stuff because all I have to do is <laughs> read and talk. Read some comics yeah. and show up. Yeah. You just get to just get to do the fun part of it, which yeah. is kind of yeah, that's super rad. I would I've tried to help edit, but I get to Oh yeah. To, I feel bad. Don't 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 worry about it. You don't have to edit. Yeah, I'll spend like <laughs> three hours on like you've ten made, minutes. Yeah, you've progressed ten minutes. It's okay. Just does just stop. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, oh no, it's I, one of those things where it's like, yeah. I mean, even even after you've gotten a little bit of practice at it, there's just a, some people that are so good at it that they can do it without almost like playing piano like they don't even think about it they just play a song and that seems like the same way with editing like once somebody really has it down whoa yeah. <laughs> it's crazy it, randy is like listening to the show on like super fast speed so we're all chipmunks and he's like oh and, I, and i'm like <laughs> yeah, catching it yeah having to replay things four times because i'm like wait i think there's something in there mm-hmm. yeah the editing in super fast speed is very helpful but i was gonna say i predict because it's a good concept um and actually like a specific concept instead of something as vague as comic books and nerd culture <laughs> I, I predict your podcast will far surpass ours and listeners very quickly <laughs> well it, who knows you know it could go either way it could oh, be a thing where I put all well, you're yeah, okay. I'm hoping you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry, you're right. Who knows? But no, I, I really do think that. That can be our you could get could get lost in in the the noise, but who knows? Yeah, but it seems like the kind of idea because with this show, um I mean I enjoy it, but there are a lot of other shows that do a very similar thing. And mm-hmm. I'll even say do a similar thing and maybe better but different. Um, but, but your concept for your, for turning cartwheels podcast, um, it, it's one of those concepts where you're like, Oh yeah, that's, that's good. And it sounds interesting. And it's also like you would like, it's a concept that like gives you new things to discuss and new people to talk about every episode mm-hmm. or new people to talk to and stuff like that. And really anybody can be an authority on this too. Like I could talk to anybody. I can seek out certain people, but anybody can tell me what they like about their job. I mean, I could talk to somebody that works on a, in a, like a meat packing plant and be like, what do you, what do you do to have fun? Because that sounds like a terrible job. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's kind of like, it's almost at the same time. It's like a, when, when people talk about like, if you're going to start a podcast, you could, you should find a niche. You should find something specific, a specific uh, audience to key into. And I mm-hmm. think what's good about your idea is that it's it's kind of niche, but also uh, opens you up to a much wider audience than something like just our show here, because mm-hmm. because you will be able to talk to lots of different people about different fields and different things, and so listeners will be able to tune in and learn something new about something they don't know about, or mm-hmm. or never really know what they're getting into, but still know what they're getting into because yeah. It's it's the it's the Jesse show. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll kind of be the Jesse show. I don't know. Um, and I'm I'm going to play with the format a little bit. I think um, what I want to do is just uh, release it almost like a season, so I can take mm-hmm. bre- take breaks. You know, like I think I'll try to record um, maybe like eight episodes and um, and call that season one. Mm-hmm. And then take a take a break and and record another eight or something something to that effect. So that uh, when I'm consistent, I can be real consistent. And then when I need a break, because there are those times in the year, um, it won't be like, well, where's he at? You know, like he's just pod fading. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, so. And I think, I think podcast audiences are becoming more used to that type of schedule. Mm-hmm. I think the serialized podcast shows are like serial and different shows like that. Yeah. I think are opening people up to the idea of, a show being released in seasons, even for shows that are like a nonfiction podcast show. Um, right. Because, because you're right. Like it, w- consistency is good, is important. Even if that consistency m- means 
releasing season chunks. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so yeah, that's a good idea. When Netflix is also getting us ready for that kind of idea too, where we're just like, we're, we're ready to have a whole feed full of stuff mm-hmm. and then, uh, and then consume it at our leisure as mm-hmm. opposed to waiting for the next episode to come out. Yeah. Which I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm not going to like dump all four. Yeah. All yeah. Eight, you know, it, I'll probably dump three to get on net, uh, iTunes new and noteworthy, but that's about it. I, I I'm excited for it. Yeah, if you if you got drunk and told jokes, you'd be like uh, insomniac. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what you need to do is get drunk and talk about your workplace. <laughs> oh, and let's see what happens. No, you get, you get oh, drunk. No. You get what drunk and talk wrong? about their workplace. You're like, I'm gonna come and get drunk and watch you work and laugh. <laughs> uh, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With that, with that, <laughs> that Dave a- Dave Attell guy or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah. That's cool. I'm looking forward to that. But I'm sorry, this is off subject a little bit, but not. Most of the places that I worked when I was having fun, it was usually doing something that I would get yelled at for. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like, sometimes that's what you have to do is, uh, you know, prank people. So in some cases, I probably won't be able to talk about their current job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because they won't feel comfortable about it. And be like, yeah, I like uh, really doing mean things to this coworker that's terrible to me. And I'm admitting it on your podcast. Yeah. No, I, mine was like, you know, stop writing the pellet jacks or, you know, something. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something ridiculous. So when that's out, That'll be on Jesse. will have a website, and it'll also be on the Electronic Media Collective Podcast <gasps> Network. Yay! Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I also want to mention that we are also on the Comics Podcast Network at <gasps> comicspodcast.com. dot com. Awesome. I don't think we I don't think we shout out that one enough. Um, but it's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and we just found out that uh, Brandon Lapani is uh, going to be an author. Yeah, he's releasing a book uh, in a it, well from the time this is out in about a month. Yeah, I didn't, yeah, even, awesome. I didn't, I didn't even know he was writing one. And you, uh, well, he's got his uh, Facebook page up already for it. Uh, Brandon Lapani Books, isn't that the name of the page? Yep, yep. You can search that out on the Facebooks. Uh, do you know what it's titled? It's a mystery novel. Yeah, it's like a murder mystery detective type novel, be, like a series, right? Yeah, I believe mm-hmm. he said like a three, like a trilogy. Okay. A three three Ooh. book series. Um, and he was on for listeners. Why we are talking about this? If you haven't listened to other episodes, he's been on the show. Um, he was also like the first podcast on the on the Electronic Media Collective podcast network that wasn't uh, us that didn't have me on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and he's kind of slowed down podcasting lately, and now I know why he's been writing books. Um, yeah. He's he's always got one up his sleeve, doesn't he? He's mm-hmm. oh yeah, he's always he's always got another thing, another iron in the fire. It mm-hmm. seems. Mm-hmm. Uh, his first book is set to release in January 2016. It's called The Pangram Killer. I'm probably butchering that. Pangram Killer, Pan- uh, and it's a Serena Triton detective novel. He's got the he's got the first book cover uh, up on his Facebook page, mm-hmm. Brandon Lapani Books. And you can see it there, right. which is actually Facebook.com, Brandon Lapani Books, that with the you, forward slash in the middle. Makes okay. you want to write a book. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, you know, kudos, kudos, Brandon, because that's a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. I think when he posted about that, I was just so surprised because he said it'd be out in January. And I was like, I didn't even know you were working on anything like that. So it's <laughs> yeah. very cool. But I mean, he has been kind of off the radar lately. He I really mean, has. Yeah. So you can kind of tell that he's been he's been in the lab. That's what he's been working on. He's got his he's got his his secret projects. You never know what this guy's going to do. <laughs> Thankfully it was a book and not like a killer robot. Yeah, or an earthquake machine or Wait, wait. Brandon, a little robot. That would have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Brandon, first of all, don't listen to Melanie. Uh give us a little more heads up on the killer robot. Yeah, I mean <laughs> You're releasing a book in about a month and a half. That's great. You're releasing a killer robot. Maybe give us a heads up. Give us a little lead time on that one, please. Can, can I share a little story? You can. I was taking the kids home the other day, mm-hmm. and they were talking about when they get older and start driving, and if they were going to be good drivers. And I'm like, well, by the time like Chloe's a, a, a able to drive, hopefully 
uh, cars will just be driving themselves. It'll, they'll be like robotic, and you don't. We won't have to worry about it, so you won't be able to kill anybody. And and Gabe's like, no, because by that time, robots are just going to take over and enslave humanity anyway. <laughs> And I'm like, but that's only, you know, that's only like, what, 13 years? It'll take longer than that. Come on. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it'll be our kids <laughs> that are getting enslaved. <laughs> I'm like, this is fantastic. Yeah, like, <sighs> It's like the global warming issue only with robots. That yeah. kill. It's like, yep, it's fact. Uh-huh. <laughs> we won't have to worry about it, but our kids. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to have a dying son. <laughs> <laughs> oh i just want to mention um listeners if you well first off if you listen to this on like itunes or stitcher don't forget to rate and review because that helps us out but the reason i even brought this up other than to pimp pimp ourselves on you was um if you don't visit the re- uh the grolicspodcast.com website regularly you should definitely check it out because jesse is consistently been hitting us with awesome reviews of pretty much everything Doctor Who and Big Fans <laughs> related. Yeah. Um, it's, it's pretty impressive, but he's got reviews of the Torchwood audio dramas and, or audio plays, whichever you prefer the term, mm-hmm. and, and Doctor Who everything. Um, so definitely check that out. And the, uh, the one thing I miss is I, I don't hit like, um, the fourth Doctor stuff just cause. I'm already hitting everything else. I was going to say, how could you then? (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. But, but my subscription, I've done a full year of those. So, um, I don't know. I don't know if I will hit quite as many of them in the new year, but I'm definitely going to hit, um, like the War Doctor is going to be coming out. And I've already got that on deck and, uh, Doom Coalition. I'm, I'm down for that. So there's some, there's some fun ones still coming your way. And I, We'll still do at least one a month, so there is that. Here's one thing I'll try for in 2016. Um, I'll try to review review more comics on the website because I kind of was doing it off and on, and then I'd have some guest writers do it. Um, but it's been pretty inconsistent, so I'll try to at least some of the the series I'm reading anyway. I'll try to throw some review more reviews up there. And I'll should just- should we social proof it and be like, hey, we're gonna do a review for Jessica Jones? Should we just say that? Sure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> now, are we talking of overall? The yeah, I think, ju- I think just an overall. And we could do like um, Randy thinks, Jesse thinks, hmm. Melanie thinks. Okay. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. What was I trying to... There was something I... I had a similar idea, but I don't remember what it was we were going to review. But I was going to try to get you guys in on something like that. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. I remember when it came up, it was when you, that interview thing was happening mm-hmm. and you were like, we should do that. Something like that. Where we like each get our. Oh yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I didn't do the interview. Yeah. But well, that I was a podcast, podcast thing. Yeah. yeah. You're, well, you're a podcast host, mm-hmm. but you're not really like a producer or a listener. No, I know. Or a fan I of podcasts. <laughs> I know. No, I'm not. You're a podcast personality. Yeah. Well, here's, here's my thing. I will try to do something. Melanie will do something. I don't know what it'll be, but I'll try to do more of something. Good and enough. <laughs> YouTube anime reviews coming in 2018. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually wrote, <laughs> I wrote a bunch of them. I just never did anything with them. I know. It's okay. I try not to pressure you about it. I know. But, but I don't want to be that guy. And you know how I am. I. Uh, that's why I can't write things, because I... I, it's never good enough. It doesn't for me. have to be perfect. It's it just, has to be perfect. In me. this case, they're just reviews. Ah, uh, well, still. It's just your thoughts on this thing that people. Maybe I I I overanalyze a freaking text. I can't. I don't even post words most of the time on Facebook because I I, I spend like twenty minutes being like, no, that's not that's not the right word. That's not what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> you can post sonnets instead of uh, status updates. Yes, and <laughs> yeah. and it's it's frustrating. I can't. Yeah, I can't, that, I, that's why I will never tweet. Well, that kind of well tweets. Yeah, maybe it would be worse. Tweets tweets do get kind of rough, especially if you're particular about your wording, and then you run mm-hmm. out of characters. Yep. <laughs> I found I run into walls when I have to write something about myself. Mm-hmm. When yeah. I have to write something about other things, it's not so bad. I just have to make myself do it. Um, but I ran into this twice recently. Uh, podcasts are the best. Jesse had an interview on there, like a written interview. 
And he had also sent me, um, the, the, oh, Andrew, I believe was the guy that ran uh-huh. that. He had sent me an email with, with questions as well. And I had filled most of it out, but I was like really having a hard time with certain things. I don't know, just writing certain things, writing about myself, I guess. And he recently <laughs> announced that he's, he's not going to do the blog anymore. And I was like, Oh, I waited too long. Uh-huh. Um, but then also, um, for music stuff, I was supposed to write like, well, I didn't have to, it was optional, but it would have probably been helpful to these people. Anyway, it doesn't matter this whole thing, but a bio, like a musician's mm-hmm. bio, mm-hmm. I got so stumped. It's so I, so I was just like, nope, don't need a bio. I'm just a guy. Here's music. Um, <laughs> Even our about page is uh, oh, yeah. something that we kind of waited. Yeah, you yeah, did tell me to write a bio for that, and I never did. <laughs> I ended up coming up with the about page was was a little tricky, but it wasn't bad. I kept it short, and I got to write st- something for you and Jesse. Uh. So by the time I had the format for you guys down, it was easy to fill mine in. Mm-hmm. And it's our about page is just kind of more fun than anything. I it amuses me. Okay. Um, I didn't have to go into too much detail about our actual bio. Just you know, like you or. A mysterious internet presence or something or a non-internet <laughs> entity. I don't know. And uh, Jesse's a puppy, uh, a puppet. Remains an internet mystery. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that was okay. But yeah, even our about page took a little while to put together. The pictures helped. Once I got three cartoon pictures of us, I was like, okay, this works. Yeah. Check it out at growlixpodcast.com. You'll <laughs> love it. Yep. Hey. <laughs> 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 Are wow. we doing the pimpy? Like us on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and every other social network. Pinterest. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. Do those things that Melanie told you to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like and, and subscribe and thumbs up and whatever else there is to do. If it's a positive seeming thing, that's what we want you to do. Yes, please. If there's stars, give us lots of them. <laughs> if there's reviews, just put nice words together. Yeah, like rainbow unicorns. And that's an acceptable review to me. Yep. How can anybody read that review and not want to listen? I know. Or Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. Trump's unicorns. Yep. Yeah. Facebook.com slash Grawlix Podcast. Twitter.com slash Grawlix Podcast. YouTube.com slash Grawlix Podcast. Tumblr.GrawlixPodcast.com. Oh. Yep. Uh... Pinterest.com slash Grolix podcast, I think is how Pinterest works. You know, throw a Grolix podcast in there. Slap a Grolix on it. Yep. Yeah. Um, we've and- got, uh, different things on different things too. Like, uh, Facebook's got the group. You see a lot of, oh, uh, a lot of linky links. And, uh, on Twitter, we do links too, but a lot of times we'll, uh, throw out the comics of the, of the month list. And, uh, uh you know, like we just had a response on that today or yesterday and uh i bought another book i won't read <laughs> yeah <yep. laughs> just because just because we send out the list i fell for it <laughs> you fell for our list yeah i fell for our list i should be immune to that <laughs> i'm not i'm not yeah the new comics list is actually pretty handy to me so i'm glad we can do it because it's got to be handy to somebody else oh yeah um that's actually kind of what pushed me to do it because uh I wanted one. I wanted new comics l- lists every week for the new comics. And I figured out how to get that information in a convenient manner. Mm-hmm. In fact, those are available on RSS feeds separately of anything else. Like you can get our lists. Um, there's RSS feed to subscribe to. And those RSS feeds might have way more subscribers than our podcast RSS feed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's they, good and bad. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's good and bad. Listen, if you're going to subscribe, you know, click the link and buy something from uh, from where it takes you. That might help. <laughs> that might help us a little. <laughs> yeah. No, it is like an affiliate link type thing. We've never made a sale off of there, but that's fine. The main reason I set that up, I had to set up an affiliate link to get access to um, basically the data that's like, hey, here's what's coming out. Um, and even though we've never made any money off of it, it's psh, paid off. Cause like I said, it's those lists are useful to me. So yeah, they're great. Yeah. They great. I agree. This is Randy. We seem to be made to Grolix. That is our lot in life. This is Melanie. Hokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good Grolix at your side. This is Jesse. 
and I felt a disturbance in the Grolics, as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. It's a Grolix! Thank you for listening to Grolix Podcast. The Grolix Podcast is a production of Electronic Media Collective and Vocal Arrow Studios. This podcast is released under a Creative Commons Attribution, Non-Commercial, No Derivatives, 4.0 International License. To hear more, visit GrolixPodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash GrolixPodcast and like us on Twitter at Twitter.com slash GrolixPodcast. Are we done with commercials? Has commercials ended? (laughs) Commercials ended a while ago. 2016, we'll promote some stuff that we don't get paid to tell you to enjoy. Uh Yeah. Like webcomics. Maybe we'll bring that back. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) You remember when we used to talk about webcomics? I mean, we had, we, we had lofty ambitions of all these segments. Yeah. Now we just read one book. <laughs> I'm sorry. Remember when we talked about horror comics? Yeah. yeah. Or we, for some reason, decided we were going to try to read comics that are <laughs> terrible. Terrible. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, still a funny idea in, in theory.